Good morning, everyone. A chilly, chilly morning here on the shores of Lake Superior. We are up in Beaver Bay along the North Shore and uh, been up here for a couple of days now and headed out of the lodge at 3.15 this morning because we're getting on close to the summer solstice and the sun comes up mighty damn early, 5.10 in the morning. So it's not quite sunrise yet. You might be able to see the moon behind me there. I don't know. Uh, but it's chilly. It's 43 degrees here right now, uh, middle of June. And uh, we are at a place called Split Rock Lighthouse. And you can see here that I have a composition set up with these wave pools. Some beautiful rocks in the foreground here in this mirror-like pool and a reflection of the Split Rock Lighthouse. So I've been experimenting with shutter speeds because of the dark rock and the trees and the bright sky. I've been using uh, neutral density filters in varying degrees. I've also been using different exposures and tweaking my composition. I've been out here now for probably 45 minutes trying to set all of this up. So the sun is going to come up in about another 10 or 11 minutes and the sky keeps pinking up, which is great because I get that pink color right down here in these tide pools. It really brings out the red in these basalt rocks, this pink sunrise. Just stunning. Man, what a morning. Uh, you can tell that I'm using the little Osmo Action handheld camera here to, to shoot this portion of the video, and that's because I had to descend down 172 steps in the dark this morning and uh, it's pretty treacherous walking along the trails and then along the shore to get out here, all these loose boulders. That's a, a great way to break an ankle right there. So I didn't want to uh, carry any additional gear if I didn't have to. And that's why I'm just shooting on this today. Man, what a beautiful, beautiful lighthouse. It's at times like these I'm really glad I have my uh, stadium cushion. So these rocks <laughs> are pretty jagged and not very comfortable. Look at these colors, don't you? Absolutely stunning. After crawling around on the jagged basalt for nearly an hour, I felt I had finally dialed in a composition that I was pleased with by lowering my perspective and moving over ever so slightly to my right to position the reflection of the lighthouse directly in the center of the wave pool. The texture of the rocks in contrast to the mirror-like quality of the water is exquisite and draws the viewer's eye in and toward the center and upward to the main subject. The streaking pink clouds balance an otherwise void sky and evoke a sense of calm, depth, and distance. I control the brightness by applying a three-stop neutral density filter, and to make sure that the entire image was tack sharp front to back, I focus stacked three images, blending them together in Photoshop. This was technically a very complicated, but deliciously satisfying scene to photograph and to post-process and recreates perfectly what I experienced that magical morning. There's a ring-necked moon that just swam into my scene here. Or is it a merganser? See it out there? I think it's a merganser. I soaked in the entirety of the morning and breathed in the history of the place glad that Colleen and I had taken the time to scout this location the day before. A November gale wrecked 29 ships on Lake Superior in 1905, prompting the lighthouse's construction on the 110-foot bluff. Two of those freighters foundered here 
in an area which some call the most dangerous piece of water in the world. And it was only accessible then by water. A road wasn't cut through until 1924. Taken out of operation in 1969, the Split Rock Lighthouse is now run by the Minnesota DNR as part of a 2,200-acre state park. I see the sun now, shining off that frontal lens, top of the lighthouse. This is a beautiful place to shoot in the winter because the sunrise is back here. So you get all of this cliff face lit up, you get the lighthouse lit up. I'm coming back in the winter. This would be nice. Bunch of snow, bunch of ice down here, ice shoves. One more set of shots and I think we'll call it a day. Now I'm focus stacking this as well. The rocks in the foreground, the reflection in that pool there, and then the lighthouse. I might not need all of them, but it's better to have them and not need them than need them and not have them, so. The only thing I'm concerned about is pulling these shadows out of these trees and these rocks. I just can't get myself to quit. I decided to take a few vertical compositions as the light was changing fast. This is a compilation of an exposure bracketed focus stack. It's pleasant enough, I guess, in a Hallmark card kind of way, but I think the horizontal shots give it so much more openness, so much more grandeur. What do you think? It's just so beautiful here. What an incredible morning this has been, and the sun has barely risen. I'm torn between these two images as to which one I prefer. There are elements of both that I like, but I just can't make up my mind. I would love to know what you think. Do you prefer image number one, the bluer pre-dawn HDR version on the left, or image number two, the more pastel pink image on the right? You can leave your preference below in the comments. And if you'd like, state your reasoning behind your decision. I'd really appreciate that. I'm glad I brought my sticks. All right. Time to go wake up Colleen and see what kind of adventures we can get ourselves into today. After all, the day is just beginning. So Colleen and I stopped for some lunch along this Cascade River here at Tedegut State Park. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's a raven. And he's been following us all the way up this river. I think he's pissed off that we're in his territory. But what a gorgeous day. Perfect day for a hike. It's about 60 degrees, mostly sunny, mostly mosquitoes, even though we lathered up good with bug spray. Anytime you stop and there isn't a breeze, they just swarm onto you. I think the mosquito is the uh, official state bird of Minnesota. Mm. Colleen rolls her eyes, so probably true. <laughs> Anyway, just look at this spot. Isn't it gorgeous? It's just, just wonderful. So we have some, what do you call these crackers, Kyle? Crunch Master crackers with some sausage and some cheese that we got from the lodge this morning. Some cashews and, of course, some gummy bears for dessert. Well, we walked, I don't know, three quarters of a mile up this trail. Maybe a mile, I don't know, since we left the lodge. And the next part of the trail is stairs, lots of stairs. I already did 172 stairs twice this morning, so 
I'm done with stairs for today. All right, don't know where the rest of the adventure is going to take us today. We've been scouting. I found two really wonderful places for sunrise photos tomorrow within five miles of where we're staying. So, uh, looking forward to that. All right, from the Cascade River. Talk to you later. Hmm? Sorry. Colleen corrected me. It's the Baptism River. Cascade Trail, Baptism River. All right. Later. <laughs> that one's better. That's good. That's better, yeah. I'm laughing. There he is, our friend, Ricky the Raven. What are you looking for, Rick? Throughout the day, we were greeted repeatedly by the plaintive cry of a lone raven in the distance as we traveled as far north as Grand Marais and back again. Our week-long journey brought us to nearly a dozen waterfalls throughout Minnesota and the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. I decided to show you all the highlights here. Incidentally, the music I chose is a bit of a happy accident, appropriately titled, Feeling Minnesota. If I can find a composition closer, I'm going to have to get farther back. So, trying to get a shot of these falls. Stop for some lunch. It was perfectly quiet here. Nobody was here. One or two people. We finish our lunch go down to the falls. There's like 25 people up there, so I'm trying to set up a shot here of the lower falls, Amnicon Falls. There's an upper falls that is blocked from view from this shot, but uh, these lower falls, I'm going to try to get a shot here with the covered bridge that goes over the falls. Um, as soon as these people decide to get out of my way. Ah, oh good, the cloud, the sun is going behind a cloud here. That'll take a lot of the glare out of the water as people move into my scene, like a herd of cattle. You know, I can't complain. I mean, you know, it, you just have to be patient. And uh, in the meantime, yeah, some clouds have moved in, which is great. 
You always want to shoot waterfalls, preferably on an overcast day, even a rainy day. Uh, it just takes out all of the hard shadows and lowers the dynamic range. Maybe they'll look up and they'll see that I'm actually taking a shot and they'll move out of the way. One guy's looking at me like a dog that just heard a new sound. Anyway, so an ND3 filter and I'm shooting anywhere between uh, one eighth of a second and one fifteenth of a second to get some water movement in that water, which looks great. Uh, not too milky. Uh, you can really see the movement in the water. What's not coming through very well is the water is very yellow coming down the falls. Um, yellowish green, actually. That's from the tamarack trees that fall into the river. And also a little bit of the iron orange that's mixed in with the water. Yeah, so I'm shooting between 7.1 and uh, 9.0 aperture, depending on the shutter speed. Try not to blow out the highlights and maintain the shadows. Oh, I'll just stand in there now, so we'll wait. <laughs> Tired of trying to shoot around the sightseers, I sat down on this rock with a 70 to 200 millimeter lens set to auto and began experimenting with intentional camera movement shots at slow shutter speeds. It was great fun, and the results, well, let's just say I'm hooked. Thanks for watching everyone. There are plenty more adventures to come on our journey to the shores of Lake Superior. Until next time, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you down the road.